In this video, we're going to have a look at a process called completing the square. Now, you'll be familiar yourselves in the past with having to maybe uh, rearrange the equation of a straight line so that you could pick out certain bits of information regarding that straight line. Well, this is something similar. We're going to take this time a quadratic function and we're going to rearrange it in such a way as to help us uh, identify certain features of the quadratic function. Now, if we just first of all consider functions which have a coefficient of x squared which is just 1, then what we're going to do is we're going to take our quadratic function and we're going to undergo this process called completing the square and we're going to end up producing something that looks like this, where you have x plus or minus a value all squared and then you're going to have a, a value out with the bracket as well. Okay, so let's have a look at a few examples and let's see if we can uh, get through these. Okay, now let's say first of all that you're asked to complete the square for the function x squared plus 6x. Okay, now you're going to have to produce something within brackets. Now what goes in here is always half the coefficient of x. Now if you think about it, what you're wanting is something that when you multiply it out, that gives you x squared and 6x. Now the problem is when you do x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 3, you not only get x squared and 6x, but you also get positive 9. So what I've got on the, on the board at the moment is not actually true. So we've got to introduce a corrective value. And if you like, you've got an additional 9 here that you don't want. So you've got to add, take that into account and write a corrective value. So that negative 9 is a corrective value. And that then gives us what we started with in a different form, and that is what's called completing the square. Okay, so what goes inside the bracket is, alongside the x, is always the, half the coefficient of the x in the function you started with. Okay, and if, you, if you're not sure if well, your answer is correct or not, you can always multiply it out and simplify it, and you should get back to the beginning. Okay, let's have a look at another example. This time we've got x squared plus 10x plus 3. So again, we're going to half the coefficient of x, and we're going to write in here positive 5. Now, when you take x plus 5 and square it all, you end up with x squared, plus 10x, but you've also got an additional 25. So if I just write in my plus 3 just now, because that's to be taken into account as well, what I've got here is not equal to what I've got here, because this gives me x squared plus 10x plus 25. So to get rid of the x to 25, I've got to take that away. So that there is your corrective value, the minus 25. Now, to finish things off, I need to tidy things up. And we see that that's going to be x plus 5, all squared. And then plus 3 minus 25 gives us minus 22 at the end. And that's you having completed the square. Let's have a look at this one. OK, so again, this time we've got x squared minus 8x. So we've got to have the coefficient of x. So in this case, we've got negative 8x, so in here goes negative 4. And I've got my negative 5 out with the bracket. So let's see what we've got. I want to get x squared and negative 8x. When I multiply this out, I get x squared minus 8x plus 16. So I've got an, an additional 16 I want to get rid of. So I have to introduce a corrective value in order to make what I've just written true, in order to have this line being equal to what I started with. So, that's your corrective value there, the negative 16. And you finish things off just by saying that it's going to be x minus 4, all squared, and you're taking away 5, and you're taking away 16, so altogether you're taking away 21. And that's you finished. Let's have a look at one more example before you do a couple yourselves. Now, this time we're looking at t squared minus 4t minus 1. So what goes in here is going to be half the coefficient of t, which is negative 2. Now, I've still got my minus 1. But what I've got here is not equal to what I've got here. Okay? So 
uh, we've had the coefficient of x, of t even. Now, what we've got to do is introduce a corrective value. Now, when I multiply this out, I get t squared minus 4t plus 4. So I've got an additional 4 that I want to get rid of. So I've got to introduce a corrective value of minus 4. Okay, and then we can tidy things up, and we can say that our final answer is t minus 2 all squared, and then you're taking away 5 altogether. Okay, so that's how you complete the square. So see if you can do these two examples yourselves. Pause the video and then check back and see if your answers are correct. So for this one, we're going to end up with x plus 4, all squared plus 4. Now this gives me x squared plus 8x plus 16. So I've got an additional 16 I want to get rid of. So we end up having a corrective value of minus 16. So we end up with x plus 4, all squared, minus 12. And that's you finished. Now for this one, we're going to end up saying that we're going to have p minus 1, all squared, because half of the coefficient of uh, p is negative 1. You've still got your minus 5. Now this, when you multiply it out, gives you p squared minus 2p plus 1. Now you just want p squared minus 2p. So you've got an extra 1 you don't want. So your corrective value is minus 1. You finish it off, and you say it's p minus 1 all squared, and you're taking away 6 altogether. And that's you finished. Okay? Now, you may well be asked to complete the square for quadratic functions where you have a non-unitary coefficient of x squared. Now, that means you're going to have to uh, introduce something out with the bracket. So you take out this coefficient of x squared as a common factor. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of examples of these and see how we get on. Okay, now, let's say that we're asked to complete the square for the function 2x squared plus 8x plus 1. Now, the first thing we do is that we take out the coefficient of x squared as a common factor for the first two terms only. Okay, so that means I take out the 2 as a common factor of 2x squared plus 8x. So that leaves me with 2 brackets x squared plus 4x, and I've still got my plus 1 outside. Okay, now the next thing I do is I complete the square as normal. I leave the 2 where it is, I leave the plus 1 where it is. Now if you had x squared plus 4x and you wanted to complete the square for that, what would you do? Well, you would have the coefficient of x, so you have x plus 2. Now, I want what I've underlined here to be equal to what I've underlined here. Now, this gives me x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now, I don't want the plus 4, but in actual fact, my corrective value is not going to be minus 4 because this extra plus 4 that comes out of here it gets doubled. Okay, so what we've got to do is we've got to be very careful when identifying the corrective value. So remember we said we've got an extra 4 in here, which gets doubled. So because 2 times 4 is 8, I've got to take away 8. Okay, so just to go over that again, this gives me x squared plus 4x plus 4, and the extra plus 4 gets doubled. So I've got to take away 8 in order to make sure that this line is equal to the previous one. So we then finish things off, and we say it's 2 brackets, x plus 2, all squared, and then plus 1 minus 8 is minus 7. Okay, so just a wee bit more to, to take into account when you have a quadratic, which is a non-unitary coefficient of x squared. Let's have a look at another example. This time we've got 3x squared minus 6x minus 2. So again, first thing we do is to get the coefficient of x squared. So just from the first two terms. So we end up with 3 coming out, and we take out 3 from the first two terms. So we end up with 3 brackets x squared minus 2x. And I've got my minus 2 at the end. Now then, just as we did previously, we're going to complete the square for x squared minus 2x. So we end up still with a 3 outside, still with a negative 2 coming after the bracket. Now, what goes here? Well, it's half 
negative 2, which is negative 1. Now, what about our corrective value? We've got to be very careful here. Now, this gives me x squared minus 2x plus 1. But the extra plus 1 that I've got gets multiplied by 3. So in actual fact, what I've got is an extra 3 that I don't want. So I've got to get rid of that in order to ensure that this line is the same as the previous one. And then we can just finish things up by tidying up. And we have 3 brackets x minus 1 all squared. And you're taking away 2 and taking away 3. So that's taking away 5 altogether. Okay? So that's how you deal with ones which have a non-unitary coefficient of x squared. Now, here are a couple of questions for you to try yourselves. So pause the video, see how you get on, and check back and see if your answers correspond to what I've got. Let's have a look at this one first of all. So we'll take out a coefficient of 5 from the first two terms. So we have 5 brackets p squared minus 4p. And you've got plus 7. Okay. Now we're going to complete the square. And we'll have p minus 2 all squared as our starting point. Now this gives me p squared minus 4p plus 4. Now I don't, the plus 4 then gets multiplied by 5. So in actual fact what you've got is not an extra 4 but an extra 20. Because 4 times 5 is 20. So you have to take away the 20. And then you finish off by saying it's 5 brackets p minus 2 all squared and then you're taking away 13. And that's your final answer. Okay. Now for this one, we're going to take out a common factor of 4. We end up with d squared minus 4d. And then we've got our plus 3 tagging along at the end. So we move on then to complete the square. What goes in here? The d minus 2. Because negative 2 is half of negative 4. Now you still get your plus 3. And the only thing that's left to do before we tidy up is to work out what our corrective value is going to be. Now, in here, we end up with d squared minus 4d plus 4, when all of this is multiplied out. Now, that extra plus 4 gets quadrupled. So what you've actually got is not an extra 4, but an extra 16, which you've got to deal with by taking away 16, in order to maintain the equality between that line and the previous one. So, all you have to do now is just finish things off by tidying up, and plus 3 minus 16 is negative 13 overall, and that's you finished. Okay, so that's how you deal with uh, completing the square uh, when you've got quadratic uh, functions which have a non-unitary uh, coefficient of x squared. And the main place people go wrong is that they make a mistake when working out what the corrective value should be. Always remember that whatever is hiding in here gets multiplied by the coefficient out with the bracket. Okay, so I hope that was helpful and we'll go on in another video to look at how and why completing a square is a useful skill to have. Okay.